My name is Erasmo, Eddie Malacara, founder of Eddie Aviation Videos. Now it's time for us to go inside the plane and Don here he's going to explain to me how I need to go inside this beautiful plane because it's a procedure to do it. It's a little difficult getting in and out of this plane but it's, if you follow the right procedure it's not, it's not uh, too hard and also it's, it's critical that you don't damage the plane. The little black area right here on the wing, that's the place where we can walk. If you walk outside that black area, you can, it's a fabric wing. So this is fabric, you can step right through this like you'd step on a, a sheetrock in your ceiling and, and punch a hole in it. So the black area is the, only the place that we can walk while we're getting in the plane. You step up, you first put on the, your, your right foot on, grab a hold, come up, and then there's a hold section. This hold section right here. This is the, the hold section that you can't hold on. You put your foot inside, right foot in, sit on this back section and holding on to the handle and then allow yourself to slide into the aircraft. Nice and easy, just slide in. It's not that hard. It just uh, once you get the right procedure to do it, it's, uh, you get used to it and it's very easy. Now to get out? To get out is basically the, the reverse. You hold on, to the, hold on to the grab handle, push yourself up, step into the seat, take your left foot, bring it out, step in on the black area, bring your other foot out, and then step in on the black, exit the plane. Awesome. As Don said, I need to be very careful with the wing. I need to only step on the black side. So that's what I'm going to do on the step side. Then I grab my hand from here. That's yes, right. that's correct. Then I go in. Left foot in, stand in the seat. Or on oh, the seat? Yes, yeah, stand in the so seat. Stand on the seat. Bit both feet in. Both okay. feet in. And then allow yourself to slide in nice and smooth like that. Just slide on in and you're in the aircraft. Uh, it's, a, it's a small uh, hole, but it goodness. fits. It's really tiny, really small, but uh, <laughs> It's actually, you have everything that you need to, to have uh, over here. Now, I know that you need to use a specific uh, uh, headset. Yes, that's you can correct. You use a normal conventional headset. Tell me about the headset, please. Well, well the headset is, uh, fits into a leather helmet like the old World War I fighter pilots used to wear. You see them wearing the, the uh, leather helmets. Well, these leather helmets that we still use today, but they have the headset bit in, built into them with a microphone so that you can hear. Uh, it's very noisy. If uh, you don't have the headsets on and the helmet on, it's very hard to, uh, to talk to uh, air traffic control or to hear what's going on uh, with air traffic control. So here is the headset, my friends. So Don is going to explain to me how I need to put it on. Yes, it's very simple. It's, uh, it has a, a Velcro strap. You put, put it on just like you would put on a football helmet or a bicycle helmet. You put it on, you put the strap around, the microphone comes down, it's flexible and it'll bend around and you put the mic right up to your mouth so that you can, you can talk and people can hear you. If you're too far away with the uh, noise environment with this airplane, uh, it, gets, it can get a little staticky, but you keep it close to your mouth and uh, it, you have really clear communication. So you just take this, All right. put it on, just like that. Pull it down. Awesome. The strap goes under your chin and goes through, and it's Velcro held, so it's real easy to, to adjust. The mic. Oh, yeah, I can mic, see it. And, you're, and that will protect me from the air. It, or my, uh, it'll my. Your top of your head, it'll protect the air from hitting you, and also it, it creates the environment so that uh, you can hear uh, when you're in the pattern, when you're trying to communicate on the radio, and that, uh, they also that the other traffic or tower can hear what you're trying to say. Awesome. Now explain me about how can I get out again? You said I okay. can grab from here. Yes, this, it's just the opposite. You pull yourself up, you step into the seat. All right. Okay. You sit back on the on the decking right there. Take your left foot, put it out. Remain on the black surface. Bring your other foot down, and you're clear. Step down on the aircraft, and you're clear of the aircraft. So there it is, my friends. It's a really really fun plane to be. And I already feel amazing with this headset on my head. You're ready to <laughs> go. So now we're going to go fly it and you will be able to see it. Okay, my friends, we're ready to have fun with this beautiful weather today. So Don is going to teach us how to start this beautiful plane. Okay, the, it's a fuel injected aircraft. So the first thing I do is turn the master on and give it a little bump of fuel with the electric fuel pump to get fuel up to the fuel injection unit. 
turn it on for a second, turn it off. I turn my mixture to full and barely crack the throttle and hit the starter with my feet on the brakes and pop clear. And she started right up. Make sure my oil temperature and my oil pressure, fuel, everything's okay, everything's where it should be, and we can start taxiing to the runway. As you can see, my friends, uh, it's really, really hard to see in front of us through the nose on the front of the plane. So we have a specific way to taxi on this plane, and Don is going to explain us in a moment about that. With a, with a tail wheel aircraft, you can't see over the nose where you're going. Your visibility is, is pretty much blocked in front of you, directly in front of you. The uh, white line or the yellow line on the on the taxiway, I can't even see. All I can see is my out the side. So what I, uh, in a tail craft, have, have, have the uh, procedures to do small s turns where you basically go back and forth. You see if there's anything in front of you. You look out the side. You look out to the other side. You see if there's anything in front of you. You can taxi just a little ways in front of you again, and then do another little S curve, S turn. So it's a small little turn to make sure that there's nothing in front of you that's gonna, you're gonna mess your day up. Ah, so. And uh, uh, it's hard for you to see it here because there's not enough visibility. But right now, Don is working with the pedal, and that's the main thing on on uh, a tailwheel where uh, we need to be back and forward with the pedal. That's correct. Uh, with the, while you're slow taxiing like this, you can use the rudder and a little bit of the brake. It's a toe brake, and you can maneuver pretty easy, and um, it's not that difficult as long as you're going nice and slow. Okay, I'm going to hold short right here and run up the engine, make sure the engine's running good and everything, and check the magnetos to both the left and the right magnetos. Okay, I got a 100 RPM drop on both mags. Now I've turned it back to both. It's really critical that you make sure you get it to both. And I check in around the pattern to make sure there's no aircraft in the pattern that I don't know and it hasn't announced itself. And I'm going to announce my position to take off. Edinburgh traffic, experimental November 6, actually. Lima, departing runway 14 to the north. Edinburgh traffic. All right. So Don already cleared to the right. What is coming from the right? Clear to the left. Clear for the left. And we are ready for takeoff. Line up on the runway. Everything's good. Everything's great. Get my feet off the brake. And we get it to power. Get ready to go fly. Awesome. A little forward on the stick to get the tail off. And we got enough airspeed, we pull it up, and we are off the ground. And this is one of the greatest things on aviation, the fact that we can feel the wind around a real flight. Okay, we're pulling up right now at about 500 feet a minute. Go up to 1,000 feet a minute. And we are like kids with a new toy, like boys with a new toy today. <laughs> okay, we're turning to the north right now, slowly. Move, easy turn. Camera yeah, action with 322. Taking your 322. We're going to extend our down. Well, with this climbing, this plane climbs out. The best optimum climb speed is 85 knots. And you basically you full, full throttle, 85 knots, and you put the nose up, and it'll climb at about, with two people, about 1,200 feet a minute. And uh, with myself, I, I can come out at about 1,800 to 2,000 feet per minute. Right now is the optimum climb. It feels like you're going pretty, 
pretty high up, pretty fast. Right now we're at 1,800 feet and I'll level off at 1,800. Hopefully we'll get out a little bit of this uh, turbulent, bumpy air we're in. Don, what would be the name of this airplane as uh, like a make and model? Uh, how you would describe it? This plane is called an Acro Sport 2. It's a two for two place. It was uh, designed in the early 70s by the founder of the EA, uh, EEA, the Experimental Aircraft Association. He wanted to find a plane that uh, performed similar to a pit, a pit's aircraft that you'd find in the acrobatic shows, but it was a little easier to maneuver to handle, especially on the landing. And uh, this, this plane fits that bill. It's, it's a little easier, a little uh, less, it's a little more forgiving than the uh, pit aircraft, uh, but it still has some of the same qualities as acro of acrobatic. Okay, my friends, as you can see, this plane is equipped with a stick instead of the, the normal control that we use for the conventional plane. Uh, Don, can you explain us what's the main difference between the stick and the conventional uh, uh, controls of the, of the 132 versus the stick on this plane? Well, the basic stick is it controls the ailerons in the elevator. This engine has a light homing IO360. It's a fuel injected, 200 horsepower, uh, constant, uh, it's not a, it's a fixed pitch uh, propeller. And uh, the, the cruising speed, how much uh, do you can get on this plane? On the cruising speed uh, with, uh, at about 3,500 feet altitude, is about 125 knots. Uh, this is really neat when you can feel the moisture in the clouds when you fly, fly through them. That's correct. And already I can feel the change of temperature. Oh yeah. Always above the clouds is fresh and already feeling. That's why we don't need air conditioning right now. Now, Tom, tell me what happened if it's raining today? If it was raining, we'd be back in the hangar <laughs> talking about flying. And uh, why? What would be the case? So it's an open cockpit and with a wood prop, I cannot fly in the rain. It's it's detrimental, it'll, it's not good for the prop to fly. If you had a steel prop, you're good as long as you're, you don't mind getting wet. We have no uh, cover over the canopy here, so we're, we're open to the elements. So that's true. Without that wooden uh, propeller, it would mess it up with the water, so we would be able to fly. It's a, it is a, a, a varnish on the wood, and the uh, water would act like a sandpaper and take the varnish off, which is detrimental. This is my favorite place to be, right here. Right above the clouds, in the valleys, pretending I'm the Red Baron, finding your hunt. <laughs> and I don't blame you, my friend. This is really, really fun. This is, uh, for me, aviation is just have fun. And uh, this is a, a, a nice toy to have and play uh, any day of life. And we want to perform the basic maneuvers today. Uh, that way you can see how the plane performs well in any kind of maneuver. We are not going to be able to do any aerobatic maneuvers because we don't have the parachute. We don't have the chute. And by regulation, every time that you bring the nose up or down the pitch, more than 30 degrees, or the back, or the or 60, and left to right, more than 60 degrees, you need a parachute. And we don't have that. So we're going to be limited by that, 30 degrees of the pitch, up or down, and 60 degrees of the back, left or right. And even with that, it's going to be a lot, a lot of fun with this plane. As Don said before, the plane is fully capable of aerobatic maneuvers, which we are not going to do it today. Another day, once we have the parachutes, we'll be able to demonstrate for you. So, so we're going to level off here, and Don is going to guide us for uh, the procedure to level off and continue the maneuver. Okay, I've reached my assigned altitude of 4,000 feet. I allow the plane to maintain the full throttle until I gain my airspeed and then I back down my throttle a few hundred RPMs to about 2,200 RPMs and this is the cruising position for this aircraft. Level wings, holding altitude, nice and smooth and uh, the, the throttle is about 80%. Awesome. Very good, senor. Let's try one of those steep floors to the left and one to the right, and that way our friends, uh, they can see how the plane performs. Okay, we're starting 
so small, we a small little clearing turn, look behind me, make sure there's no traffic on either side of me, and I'll do a steep turn to the left. Keep the nose on the horizon, bank the airplane, hold the nose on the horizon to keep maintaining altitude. And this is, for this aircraft, a not steep turn, but it is, for a normal aircraft, a steep turn. With a beautiful view off the left wing of the ground and the clouds are blowing. You have to maintain coordination with the aileron and rudder in this plane to make sure you keep the ball centered and the plane stable. We've maintained our altitude. We're plus about 50 feet right now. Coming around on the north heading that we started on to level off. Right now we level with, we start with a little bit of rudder and a little bit of ailerons and we're back now directly on the north heading at 4,100 feet. Awesome. Beautiful. Now,